With the addition of the new Stormglass Cathedral set, there's a few new things you can do with the Stormglass materials that really set it apart from the rest. Today I'll be teaching you 5 small but useful building tips for the new Stormglass Cathedral pieces. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, large archways. Starting off with an example strip of foundations here, we use Stormglass pillars to build up the edge. These arches are designed to be used in an interior space, so I didn't add extra pieces on the exterior, but you absolutely can if you want to. Cap off those pillars with the pillar end caps, and then grab the 2x2 vaulted ceilings. These snap right onto the top, creating large archways that can be used for entrance portals, or just extra space and detail on the interior. To take this further, mirroring the same pattern will create a 4 tile wide interior space covered by an impressive archway on every side, and of course you can wall off either side to create a gloriously large corridor, perfect for leading up to a throne room, or the heart of a castle. This tip is simple, easy, and incredibly effective. Sticking with pillars, the next tip is pillar transitions. It's easy to just snap some ceilings on top of a capped pillar and call it a day, and sometimes that works perfectly fine. However, sometimes you do need that little bit of extra flair. Atop a fully capped four-sided pillar, use the 2x2 vaulted ceilings to snap onto the pillar caps, each running away from the centre of the pillar. This is nice and easy, and leaves you with a pillar that slopes smoothly and easily into the ceiling above. You can then easily build the rest of your ceiling design, or combine it with the last tip to create an open air or closed interior space with an impressive pillar at the heart. Again, this is a really simple tip, but it works really well for your large castles, palaces or temples. Next we've got exterior pillars, a simpler version of the pillar trick I've used many times before. This trick does require a little forward thinking, but honestly not too much. Build a ring of foundations on the exterior of your build and begin to build up the pillars. The walls will sit on the outside of the white foundation tiles, so you don't need to include the piece that will sit in the interior, but I chose to. Build the pillars up to whatever height you wish, and then begin on the walls. I chose to go three tiles high, so I built the walls to that same point. I then used the 2x2 vaulted ceilings to cap off the build, but you can use regular ceilings if you prefer. I then usually always use the 1x1 vaulted pieces to transition out of the pillars smoothly on the exterior, and create a platform onto which I can then mount the roof. Using vaulted pieces is a personal preference, I just think it looks better and sets up the roof nicely. From there, you can build up the first floor, or the roof, however you like. I'll include a small interior first floor space, and then cap it off with a really simple roof design. I know people like having pillars in the corners, but the usual pillar trick is often a pain to plan for, and this trick is much easier to compensate, and provides some really attractive results. Next, chandeliers. If you have access to mods, you've probably already seen a ton of great chandeliers, but this is targeted at those who can't or don't wish to use mods. You'll want to start off with a fairly high ceiling, I'd say 4 or 5 tiles minimum, and use pillars to build down by 2 tiles. Place ceiling tiles on each step and wall it off. Place an extra tile of walls and ceiling above, and then use storm glass struts to hang off the walls below the roof. It's a little hard to explain, but basically you want the struts to end right at the bottom of the final ceiling. From here, we can then use basically whatever lighting options you'd prefer. I chose a mix of lanterns and hanging braziers, but Aquilonian or Terranian braziers would also work really well. You can add as many, or as few as you like, though I chose to use quite a lot as I do feel that works best. Again, mods have some pretty great chandeliers that you can place with ease, but if you want ones to suit your build, or if you don't have access to mods, this is a pretty good option. Finally, sticking with the decorative theme, item stands. We'll use the giant pillar bases as the item display stands, onto which you can then place, well, whichever items you like. There isn't a ton of space on these stands, but there's enough to work with where you can display a few items at once if you're creative with your spacing. The pillar bases are surprisingly forgiving in how much room they give you, usually stuff like this doesn't give you a lot of room, but this works really nicely. Aside from the 2x1 example with the set height decorations, you can also use four pillar bases as a statue display stand, which does work really well. The Siptar statues work wonderfully on this as they fit the colour scheme, and there's a surprising amount of room to fit lighting options. This is a really simple tip, but honestly the possibilities for what you can display are pretty much endless. 
If you're building a castle or a palace, you will probably want some display stands where you can show your precious items, and this is a perfect solution that is quick, easy, and very effective. And there we have it, five tips you can use for the new Stormglass Cathedral set. Thanks for watching, I've said plenty of times already that I think Stormglass Cathedral is a top tier set, and if you're a fan of it too, hopefully these tips help you to find new ways to use it. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. That being said, a massive thanks to all of our esteemed coffee cultists on screen now for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.